Welcome to Chalk Across America. I'm Doug Miles, and we're here in beautiful Sarasota, Florida. We are joined now on our Book Talk show. We're going to talk about uh, really one of the great entertainers, singers of all time, who unfortunately we lost this year. She has put together a great book about her. It's called Aretha, the Queen of Soul, A Life in Photographs. We're joined today by the author, uh, Meredith Oak. She's a, uh, a radio personality in her own right, also a great writer as well. And she joined us by telephone today. And Meredith, good to talk with you. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Oh, great. Always good to talk to another radio person. Yep. We, <laughs> we, are, are, we are the last of a kind. I, I don't think there's too many of us left, but uh, always good to, to chat right. some radio. But first of all, congratulations on the book. As I said, you know, we, we unfortunately lost Aretha this year, but, uh, you know, looking back at her life, she, she had a pretty good life. And I know she was ill the last few years, but, boy, she, she hung in there, didn't she? I know a few years ago they said she was not going to make it, and she uh, wound up performing uh, several more concerts after that, didn't she? What's the uh, the joke? My my demise has been greatly exaggerated, yeah. or something. I forget. Who, I was, saw it but, in the uh, paper. Yeah, had, her obituary is practically written. And this was like four or five years ago. Yeah, people are so chomping at the bit to get that obit out, man. It's pretty frightening when you're a, a celebrity, I guess. But um, maybe that's why she never talked about it. Uh, one of the reasons uh, right. she was rather press shy and uh, kept her feelings often inside. Um, but yeah, she was sick for a long time. I mean, she was diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer, I think, in 2011. Yeah. And she lived a really long time, considering how pernicious that disease is. So she's a fighter. You're right about her. She did not do a lot of interviews. Uh, I've seen on TV, you go on YouTube, and you can see some of her early TV appearances, like on uh, you know Merv Griffin uh, and, and those kind of shows. But she didn't do a lot of interviews, did she? She felt very early on, um, well, she was shy, first of all. I mean, she was, like, extremely shy. You know, she, uh, people who knew her very well, her family and her, her old friends all talked about this shyness of, of her, which is not uncommon uh, among super talented and even super extroverted performers. Um, but with her, it was combined with this, uh, this Time magazine article. She was on the cover of Time in 1968. Um, so, you know, she starts to get famous. She, she switches from Columbia Records to Atlantic Records, and she records the songs that we've all come to identify with her um, as sort of the beginning of her huge ascension, you know, respect, and I never loved a man, and all that. And uh, then Martin Luther King is assassinated in 68, and then, like, a month or two later, I think she's on the cover of Time magazine, and I read I read it. You can go find it. It's kind of hard to find, but it was not it was not flattering, and and she felt very hurt by the coverage. And I think that was her first realization that the press is not your friend, um, and she was very guarded after that. Yeah, yeah. Very rarely that you know she would do a song or two on a show, but you didn't hear her talk that often. So that you're right. Very very rare opportunity to hear her actually you know talk on television or even I don't know if she did much radio either. Back then. I guess she did no, some, she did but not, like, not much. She, did, yeah. she didn't care to be interviewed. She didn't like to talk about herself. She didn't like to talk about her feelings. Um, although she did do shows like The View where she would cook. She was on Martha Stewart's show, and she, she loved food. She loved to cook, so yeah. she would go do that. Um, but, yeah, she, was, it was, she really didn't express a lot. She would give, you know, great side eye if she took umbrage at someone's comment. Um, but one of the nice things, and I actually have nothing to do with this, but my photo editor, Christopher Meesom, did such an extraordinary job of assembling the photographs based on what I wrote. And he really found photos that are so expressive. And you just see in her face everything. The, the agita, the joy, the reverence, the ennui, the uh, contemplative moments. Um, they're all on her face. And they say so much more than words could. What, uh, what brought you to this project? Obviously, you know, she's one of the, the all-time greats. And you being in radio, did you play that type of music? Or how did you kind of get involved with this project? Oh, I'm a lifelong fan of soul music and R&B, especially 60s soul. And mm -hmm. uh, Detroit was just one of the great cities for that kind of music. And I, I, I've studied and, and listened a lot for many, many years. And I'm um, a lifelong Aretha fan. But really what got me to the book was I, I wrote another book over the last year called Rock and Roll Woman. It's right. also 
was published by Sterling, and it came out a couple months ago. And of the 50 essays I wrote, one of them is about Aretha, because she is one of the fiercest. Um, and so uh, I just ended up with so much stuff, I thought, you know what, she needs her own book. And you mentioned uh, in the book, you know, she's kind of known as a diva, which uh, I guess has a connotation uh, of also being a little difficult to work with. She, she had that reputation, didn't she? Yeah, and that's another reason I wanted to, one of, the third essay is called Diva, and I really dig into what that means, where that came from, and like kind of how profound that is. Because on the surface, it's just someone who is, you know, above everyone and wants to be treated in a certain way, but it's so much more than that. It's really um, self-respect, uh, and, uh, you know, she sang about respect, and, and she demanded it, and a lot of people don't. They go around this world and and uh, get taken advantage of, and she was not about that. She was like, no, you are not going to take advantage of me. And all of a sudden you get this reputation as a diva when all you're doing is just expecting people to treat you fairly and kindly. So, but I, And I also dig deep into the gospel roots of diva and the sort of drama that gospel singers brought to uh, performing. And a lot of that came from her gospel mentors, Clara Ward, and Mahalia Jackson, who were like the polar opposites of one another, right? Mahalia was this very austere, uh, very renowned and, you know, uh, wonderful gospel legend. And Clara Ward, who dated Aretha's dad, and Aretha loved her, really wanted them to get married. You know, she brought the, the glamour and the drama and the bling, and she would throw her fur around. And, you know, she famously threw her mink stole at Mahalia Jackson's casket at her funeral. I mean, it was she did all kinds of stuff, and Aretha absorbed all of this, and it really it informed who she was as a person, as an artist, and as a performer, most of all. Did you ever get a chance to uh, to talk with Aretha at all? I did. I met her once, and she was so incredible and funny and smart and cool. She was just a sharp lady. Boy, she, nothing got past her. Yeah, I was wondering, because like you said, she didn't do a lot of radio. I wondered if you had a chance to, to talk with her one time. So you did. That's good. Yeah. I did, yeah. I did talk with her. I did not, it, it was not like an interview, thank goodness, because I think I would have been terrified. <laughs> <laughs> what was her, uh, you know, offstage life like? Uh, I didn't even realize until she passed, uh, I didn't know anything about if she had children or anything. So there wasn't a lot about that either. But uh, her offstage life, do uh, you have any in insight of what that was like? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, and there's tons of that in the book. There's photos of her with her family, her four kids. Um, there's photos of her on vacation. There's, like, private moments that you don't get to see. Um, and I write about a lot of that, too, because Aretha was really a homebody. I mean, she loved nothing more than to, like, put on her fuzzy slippers and cook for family. And she would she would cook for writers who came to her, her mansion in Bloomfield Hills and, uh, and were there to write about her, her biographer, uh, or a journalist. There's one great, I can't remember the magazine that I read it in, but a guy, he had been trying to connect with her for months, and finally he just flew to Michigan. It was freezing cold. He was literally going to freeze to death. And Aretha, he called Aretha at home. He had her home number, and she said, eh, I don't feel like talking today. Come back tomorrow. And he's like, look, you can either invite me over, or you have to explain the dead white boy on your porch. <laughs> <laughs> and so she said, all right, come on in. And they, they talked about music all night. She cooked for him. They had like a fantastic time. So really, she, she could be off-putting, but she was like deeply wonderful and generous, and, and I go into a lot of that in the book to just explain who, she was a very complicated woman and uh, just larger than life and, and really, truly wonderful. Yeah, great, great, uh, great artist, great book you put together, like you said, not only your essays, but uh, the, the pictures that go along with it. I know we have a limited time today, so uh, we'll give a chance for the people to, to get the web, your website. Aretha, the Queen of Solo, Life and Photographs is the name of the book. Meredith Oaks has been our guest. And Meredith, do you have that website you want to give out? Um, you can find me at MeredithOaks.com O-C-H-S. Uh, you can find the book at barnesandnoble.com or at your local bookstore. Sterling Publishing does an amazing job of getting the books to indie booksellers, and I love to support the local bookstores. Amazon has it. It's everywhere. So, And also, uh, on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, come and like the page Rock and Roll Woman, because that's the first book I wrote this year. And... Um, and Aretha will be on there, too. Lots and lots of updates. Great. We'll also put a link on our website as well. But, Meredith, great talking with you. Hopefully we can do it again. And uh, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Anytime.
Thank you for joining us today on Talk Across America. Please visit our website at DougMilesMedia.com for more great interviews and content. And if you're interested in any of the books we talk about on the program, please click the Amazon link on our website. It helps support the podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again real soon here from beautiful Sarasota, Florida. I'm Stan Brock. 30 years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America.